They demolished the left and burned the blueprint. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. The Empire's information war against the left has been so successful that people don't even know where the left is anymore. Most have it confused with things that are tangential, like having pink hair and saying your pronouns, or outright right-wing, like the Democratic Party. Convincing everyone that communism is bad and unions work against your interests was just the first step. The next step was to confuse and muddy the waters of the political landscape so much that nobody even remembers where it was the left had been trying to get to, namely fighting and winning the class war that's being waged upon the working class by the capitalist class, dismantling capitalism and imperialism, and creating a just and equitable society for everyone. Now, if you tell your average Westerner to point to the left, they'll point at woke hashtags and at political parties that are designed to support and protect the capitalist class. They didn't just sabotage and destroy the left. They burnt the blueprints for how to rebuild it. The true left emphasizes the interests of marginalized communities with the goal of class solidarity. The fake left emphasizes the interests of marginalized communities with the goal of class division. You can sort out which is which by simple naked eye observation over a short period of time. Friendly reminder that no extremist group in the modern world is killing, oppressing, and tyrannizing anywhere near as many people as the so-called moderates of the U.S.-led world order. Find someone who loves you the way Americans love criticizing foreign governments that are far less murderous and tyrannical than their own government. Whenever I say that the U.S. is quantifiably the most murderous and tyrannical regime on earth, I always get a deluge of replies saying, yeah, well, I'd rather live there than China. Like where you live is the only thing that matters, not mass military slaughter. And I think that just says so much. It genuinely never occurs to them that the people dying from military explosives being dropped on their homes and starving to death from economic sanctions are real human beings whose lives matter. All they can think of is what country they'd rather be using their smartphones in. The fact that the U.S. happens to export most, though certainly not all, of its murderousness and tyranny overseas does not make it less murderous and tyrannical than the governments the media have trained you to hate. The people it kills and terrorizes are just as human as you. It says so much about how propaganda-addled that population is that the lives of foreigners don't even register in their assessments of a government's murderousness and brutality, skipping instead to the fact that they're allowed to call the president Brandon on social media, which, as we've discussed previously, is not even a real measure of freedom anyway. Love how it's almost universally agreed that Biden is knowingly starving people in Afghanistan for no valid reason, and it's still just happening anyway. There's a Wall Street Journal article. The Biden administration won't release any of the roughly $7 billion in foreign assets held by Afghanistan's central bank on U.S. soil after the killing of al-Qaeda's leader in Kabul, according to U.S. officials. And there's a tweet by Mehdi Hassan. Shameful. People are dying from hunger in Afghanistan, and this is not our money. It's theirs. Virtually everyone who knows about the issue wants Biden to stop starving people in Afghanistan, even people who stand to benefit material from their starvation, and he still just won't. There's another article from MSN.com. Families of 9-11 victims urge Biden to direct $3.5 billion worth of frozen assets to the Afghan people. This is their money, not ours, they argue. There is a night and day difference between someone who wants the U.S. to stop bullying and dominating the world and someone who wants the U.S. to stop bullying and dominating some parts of the world so it can focus on bullying and dominating China. They're really nothing alike. Faux populists on the right oppose some aspects of the U.S. war machine, but they support other aspects and don't oppose the empire itself. Faux populists on the so-called left provide little or no resistance to the empire. They just want the empire to give them health care. Wealth is meaningless if everyone is wealthy. Power is meaningless if everyone has power. The kings of our day have a vested interest in keeping everyone poor and powerless, because if everyone is king, then no one is king. 
Imagine wanting to be a cop as a kid, wanting to grow up and get into the police academy so you can fight crime and bad guys. And then you get to the police force and you find out the whole job is writing tickets and destroying homeless encampments. Question mainstream politics and they'll tell you to support the lesser evil. Question capitalism and they'll say it's better than any other system. Question the empire and they'll say it's better the U.S. rules us than risk anyone else. It's all lesser evilism in support of evil. Every time you point out the dysfunctional nature of our systems, you're told, well, it has to be that because otherwise it would be something far worse. Oh yeah? Anyone benefiting from you believing that? Any powerful people pouring energy into mainstreaming that idea, perchance? It's like the abuser who says, go on, leave. No one will ever love you like I do. You'll fail and you'll come crawling back. And the victim stays out of fear of what's going on on the other side of the unknowns inherent in that blind leap. But at some point, you've got nothing to lose. Humanity is still being born. As a species... We're just barely crowning.